Okay, so today we are going to finish um, alcohol chapter, uh, sorry, uh, alkyne chapter, and we will be starting alcohol chapter. But I think um, there are some uh, reactions uh, that are really very uh, important. So I need to little bit of talk uh, more. So I want to little bit of talk more. So let's start from. So I want to little bit of start from here. Let's do a little bit of detail. So synthesis of alkynes by elimination reaction. So that means if we can eliminate the hydrogen or some other group from um, alkene or alkene, so we can uh, produce the alkynes. Here we have uh, some specific example, removal of two molecules of HX from a vicinal or geminal dialdehyde can produce um, alkyne and also uh, dehydrohalogenation of a geminal or vicinal dialdehyde, dialdehyde uh, gives a vinyl allylide. Under strongly basic condition, a second dehydrohalogenation may occur to form an alcohol. So here we saw that this second uh, second step is really uh, very specific and we need to do under basic condition. But normally we do uh, also we do sometimes the heated condition uh, that approximately 200, uh, 200 degrees Celsius. So obviously this is how we can uh, synthesize the alkyne but uh, sometimes what happen due to extreme uh, condition like the we can say the brutal condition so high sometimes the uh, some side reaction so side reaction or side rearrangement occur so that means um, we sometimes cannot get the total pure product so that's why uh, this is the um, one situation that associated uh, with this kind of reaction. So now, we have another method that also, this is how we can also specify to produce the, I mean, we can specify the terminal alkyne or the internal alkyne by choosing the reaction condition. So here, this is we can um, see the regular um, alkyne with a regular reagent like potassium hydroxide and 200 degrees Celsius temperature. And this is especially in the second step. We also can do the similar kind of um, reaction, but changing the reagent like sodamide and little bit of lower temperature like 150 degree um, Celsius temperature followed by water, that this condition favors the terminal alkyne. So what type of alkyne you need, you can uh, synthesize by choosing your reaction condition. So here we could see the example of the example of this reaction. This is the two bromine and the first step we can eliminate and even directly we don't sometimes show but we can uh, do uh, this type of uh, reaction and this is actually 45 degrees Celsius. So, so uh, this type of um, reactions are very carefully chosen because uh, sometimes potassium hydroxide elimination tend to give the most stable and substituted um, internal alkyne. 
So that means we can uh, select, we can change, or we can customize the reagent, and we can produce what type of alkyne we need. If you need um, the detail of this uh, reaction, you can go back to your book, chapter 9, page number 440. And um, another example in the book, you will find that they say that uh, we can use the sodamide uh, 150 degree. You will find the example uh, how we can uh, uh, synthesize paint one in paint time. So you can check this example. As I, uh, I want to mention that we are trying to um, explain what type of reaction and how it's going on. But remember, during your exam, uh, you may uh, expect a little bit of different types of example. So whatever the example or uh, different types of problem you have with your books or homework, uh, try to practice it. You know the addition reaction. In terms of addition reaction, we saw that uh, what is the difference here normally we saw in alkyne that second pi bond, correct? So till the alkene, the reaction pattern is similar. And then uh, one step more to break down the second pi bond. And uh, here the addition is quite similar like the um, alkene, but uh, the bond energy uh, between the first pi bond and second pi bond is different. Like the second pi bond to break need the more energy compared to the first pi bond. So you can see here the first pi bond bo uh, break, uh, you already know this mechanism, so I don't need to repeat here. But when the second pi bond here to break and the final product and addition comes, in that case, you must need the bond, high bond energy. If you go back to your book, you will find the table that the second pi bond breaking, normally it takes um, uh, excess 54 kilocalorie energy than the alkene pi bond. Uh, sometimes this type of questions often ask, or you will see during the um, homework or different places. So just to make sure. Catalytic hydrogenation. This is um, almost the similar that we talk that we have this type of platinum PD or Ni surface where the hydrogen molecule adsorb and then it goes and add it, add it to the uh, pi by breaking the pi bond and add to the carbon-carbon uh, uh, sigma. So the pi bond convert to carbon carbon uh, carbon hydrogen sigma bond ultimately we find most are uh, i don't know why the different kinds of address they are showing anyway so this is uh, the particular uh, in that case and uh, also you will um, see in the book some example of this reaction please practice those examples example of it, that will be uh, helpful for you. I can see some examples, so please check some example uh, into your book that 442 pace. Here, the 99, uh, this is the another one. This is called the partial catalytic hydrogenation. So, if you now need the specific stereochemistry product like cis or trans, so we have um, some customized condition, so we can do that. Normally, if we see this type of um, reduction, it is very difficult to um, stop uh, in the middle or uh, like that. But here, this is the um, this is the kind of customized reaction where we can uh, control or we can uh, do the partial hydrogenation by applying uh, some other chemical reagent. Uh, this is uh, known as actually um, Lindler's catalyst. So it is composed of powdered barium sulfate coated with palladium poisoned with quinoline. So this, uh, by using this type of um, reagent we can uh, stop the stop the hydrogenation or we can do the partially um, hydrogenation uh, so that we can do the cis alkene you know yesterday um, one student came and asked me that why sometimes the addition or the um, 
hydrogenation produce the cis alkene or trans alkene i think you remember i discussed about the uh, syn addition or anti addition so sometimes um, specific reagent can control the syn addition or anti addition so that means by choosing or by selecting Selecting the reagent is very important what type of product you are uh, need. So this type of question often comes during the exam or quiz. So when you study, we know that the, I want to tell you that this, uh, this semester, the organic chemistry is the most advanced level organic chemistry if you consider as an undergraduate student. So we know mechanism in the same time we have different types of um, famous reaction uh, famous reagent or uh, customized reaction so we need to be remembered and uh, we, if we need to be remembered those we need to be practice and another tricks I will show you uh, maybe you know somehow I'm not sure uh, if you go to the online different site especially Google you will see the um, you know the this is called the cheat cheat notebook or something so there is a, some flow graph diagram kinds of things uh, you also have in your book some so the alkene what type of reaction what type of customize what type of individual properties the um, specific hydrocarbon have for example alkene alkene all kind or a cheat sheet have those kind of um, in flow diagram in one page Sometimes, uh, if you want, this is the smart way to study. You can make your own cheat sheet or you can uh, download. Some are free, some are not. So you can download and that helps to uh, practice or to um, remember that uh, each, is especially the similar kind of hydrocarbon or uh, substituents, like after the alkyne, we are going back to alcohol and lots of substituents we will be studying. So similar, you can't imagine. So it is important that uh, you take, you do very focused and um, here uh, practice is the only one key to get succeed and higher grade because so many reactions you will see the similar but not the same, similar but not the same. So you need to be make your own study plan or cheat sheet that how you will try to be practice and remember those uh, special experiment are those which are the same or similar so you can do like that actually it helps during the study i mean from my experience i'm telling so like here this is the situation you can produce the cis there are some reason that specifically produce the trans even you will see the some reason that produce a mixture of cis and trans so um, yeah you have to practice and remember those things so this mechanism we already know so we I will not go and here you can see that this is the scene edition. So when scene edition, um, you will find that cis and when the um, trans edition, I mean the anti opposite side edition, then you will have uh, transform of product. So just to make sure. Yeah, I, I think the same question, same question uh, is that Delhi asking me. And here, um, yeah, we have uh, this one, the reduction of alkyne with a metal ammonia. This is the kind of um, specific time. I think um, last time I also talked, so just to make sure here. This is the meta uh, mechanism of a metal reduction. Uh, same mechanism, you, same thing you will find into your books. I just say that try to uh, practice here. Please try to practice here. As we can see here, what happened actually the metal reduction? Here first we got the radical anion. You can see here we have the non-bonding pair of electron, but here we have the radical, I mean unpaired electron. So free radicals are always those species or molecules which uh, have unpaired electron and that mainly arise by the homolytic cleavage. So try to make uh, sure those things and uh, take it uh, take it out that how it comes because I already discussed in the last class so I need to start the alcohol so I move on. 
So here I want to tell you something because this ex this uh, specific reaction uh, sometimes is student uh, mistake. So if you look into addition of one mole of halogen, you will see sometimes this type of uh, question into your test or exam, the two mole of halogen. Never be confused when we, we can customize that what type of product we uh, need. So if we need uh, like a dye, dibromor kind of uh, product. Uh, this is obviously C, you can see this is a mixture of uh, C and trans. So here uh, we can uh, continue the addition uh, by increase the amount of reagent. So if you look into here, the one mole of halogen and here the product, but if you look into the uh, two mole of uh, halogen, See here, this is a two moles of halogen can add to the triple bond forming the tetrahalide. And see, this product is stable and 100% yield. So you can see the difference between the two reactions. Sorry, where I was. Sorry. Yeah, here I was. So uh, when you see the, um, like I can ask you, for example, that I give you this part, I asking you the end product. Or I give you this reagent and this product, I asking you uh, to find uh, what is the correct amount of uh, mole of halogen is here. So you have to see the reagent product, you have to find out your, uh, uh, mole of halogen or I can give you the total the uh, reactants the left side the mole of halogen and so you have to find out the um, product why I am asking because uh, if you look into the syllabus the syllabus and time is so tight so tight time uh, you know this is uh, you have to practice I understand but at the same time it is also my pressure but I have to explain and also finish all the topic within the time. So that's why um, when I will tell, try to note it down. I have recorded all the lecture, but I don't know why uh, I'm having trouble to download. They are telling the big file, even I want to share. But if you can, you, it also fine. Um, many people now just do that. I, we cannot control it. So you can note it down and you can remember the way I say, because I am... I always try to cover each and every topic that you need. Where you need explanation more, I will give. Where you don't need, I will not give. Because I know that if I tell you that each and every mechanism, it's not possible. And if you look into your syllabus, they also specify some topic that what we can ignore or what we cannot. So remember when you do this type of, uh, you need practice. There is no other way to uh, done this kind of job. So try to be find out. Uh, actually, I went or gone through the what type of. Uh, um, I mean, I I saw this and your homework pop up. So I saw even uh, your syllabus don't have the no nomenclature too much. But I saw the whole, during the homework. I mean, I saw a couple of nomenclature, and uh, mostly kind of things they give you the example. Find out the mechanism. Find out the product. Find out the reason. So yeah, you, without practice, it's going to be tough. Yeah. So here we have uh, the another one, the addition of halogen. Uh, this is the similar. I I mark on it follow. So yeah, yeah. So try to uh, see. Try to follow the example. You know, first we do the R. R means common alkyl group. Then we have some example. I suggest you to practice by your pen, notebook, pen on hand, not the just watch on the things. Okay, then uh, you will two two advantages you will get. First of all, you will able to find so many uh, able to find to practice the name of the alkyne, and and in the same time you will find that what type of product with the different specific example of alkyne um, can form. Because obviously there are some alkyne, you will see the hydrogen chloride and hydrogen bromide is working, but hydrogen iodide is not working. I think I, I will show you some example because today I find it when I was um, a little studying. Yeah, let's find it. So I think I will show you if I find um, in front of me. Like addition of HX, if you look into, uh, here we go, HX equal to hydrochloric, hydro. that means these three are working. But there are some um, 
reaction that uh, hydrogen chloride bromide works, but maybe iodine doesn't work, but vice versa. So when you will practice and look into this example, it will be more clear for you. Here, um, the mechanism is uh, uh, similar. So pi bond first act as an electrophile, so uh, break and uh, make a bond uh, by protonation and then carbonyl form, and then and uh, the it works as a hydrogen halide broke and works as a uh, nucleophile. So this is a similar one. Uh, this is the um, uh, anti Markovnikov and the opposite one. And see, you have to be see this kind of reagent. You have to be familiar. I know um, your semester is four months, but so many things to do. So please practice. Uh, so if you see like the in the test that you have this one, this one, maybe asking or maybe writing A, B, C, D, different kind of reagent. So you need to choose. You all know the peroxide means always. But um, anti Markovnikov, so opposite uh, of Markovnikov. Hydration of alkynes, so H and OH here, anode will form, and here, uh, one important topic I, I want to discuss that's called the tautomerization. So, here actually, uh, let me just uh, go back to which one? Nine, nine. Hydration of alkyne, yes. This is very important uh, for uh, this chapter. This is very famous experiment, experiment and reaction, okay? So focus here. And always we saw the question because keto and enol, that means um, some keto product or enol product form that are not stable. So they change uh, the, their structure uh, and uh, this changing from keto to enol and um, Enol to keto means CO, you know, the keto group and enol OH. So keto to enol or enol to keto, they interchange and this process is uh, called the not so stable. That's why they can change and shifting some uh, proton and uh, change some double bond. And as a result, the keto enol formation happen and this procedure is called the tautomerization. And this is very important. We often see the question from here. So let's see, we have two types of hydration, um, I mean, of al alkyne. Here, actually, I want to focus, that's why I went to the, the, a little bit of review and focus there. So number one, um, hydration, that follow the mercuric sulfate in aqua sulfuric acid, uh, add HOH to one pi bond with a Markovnikov orientation, forming a vinyl alcohol enol that rearranges to a ketone. And we have the second one, hydroboration, uh, that we are going to talk later. So let's go back to here. So what actually happened here? Yes, but I also want to show something from the book. Yes, so if you look into here, the reaction is not so um, complicated, but if you look into here, this is the step forward. If, when we will go into the uh, mechanism, we will see the how resonance stabilized mechanism, I mean, forming uh, using the mercury intermediate that I'm going to show into the next, but first let's see here. So here HOH and it will um, follow the uh, similar things here. This is the alkyl. So obviously OH uh, neutrophile, it will come here and hydrogen will come here. So here you could see here what happened. I want to draw something if you don't draw here. Yeah. So what happened actually here, this, uh, you, you can look what are the difference. This OH, carbon OH, this hydrogen um, will be shifting. This hydrogen will be shifting and the carbon oxygen double bond will form and this carbon carbon double bond will shift here. And uh, you can see when it will be carbon carbon single bond, you can see this hydrogen will be shifting here. So this is how the enol and keto always interconverted because they are not stable. And this situation, the shifting of the enol form 
enol alcohol vinyl alcohol and keto form this one this form is called the tautomerization keto enol tautomerization so this is a kind of isomer that's not the stable so in that case the hydroxy proton um, is uh, uh, lost as we said and the proton is regained here the methyl position while the pi bond shift from carbon carbon position to carbon oxygen position so this is a kind of relative equilibrium this is also the kind of rapid equilibration happen and this is called the tautomerization process or more specific way the uh, keto enol tautomerization so this is very very important famous and uh, exam material too because it has lots of commercial applications okay so remember this is very important here the mechanism uh, this is called the uh, okay do i have here yeah okay i i'm going back here but what happened is actually because we saw that this reaction is happen in presence of mercury 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 sulfate and also the sulfuric acid so actually um, when they follow the addition similar pattern that time the you can see here where the mercury is um, working like proton so normally we saw that the proton add correct the proton means here hydrogen positive ion so here uh, just consider that the replacement of hydrogen the addition here mercury plus ion is adding and when mercury plus ion is adding and this rearrangement called called the organomercurial i think you still remember the alkene chapter we also find the organomercurial ion so similar pattern this kind of interconversion and um, this kind of um, intermediate formed and this is called the resonance stabilized intermediate so resonance stabilized intermediate means electron delocalization so due to electron or charge delocalization um, you can see the uh, bonding change and this is called the resonance stabilization if you want to learn more about the resonance stabilization it is related to formal charge and um, um, it happens this type of reaction and i'm not sure if you had the basic general chemistry or chemistry uh, over there we have the one chapter called the molecular geometry and resonance stabilization if anybody interested let me know i have those recorded chapter i have one youtube channel i mean i don't do for the like that but i save my le recorded lecture so i have already published anyone interested let me know that was from another lecture class so you can learn and sometimes we scare but i i don't have time to go at the basic level but and this is the kind of electron delocalization as a result you can see the bond uh, shifting so this is called the resonance stabilized intermediate form and you can look into the replacement of the mercury also happen and finally we find this type of product and the uh, elimination of mercury also um, happen as a byproduct so this is i wanted to show you that actually and uh, the keto enol tautomerization and the um, replacement of uh, mercury so please try to um, practice here and um, this is very important for exam also mechanism of acid catalyst tautomerization so delocalization of charge and when delocalization of charge happen and um, that time the uh, bonding also change so if you uh, as i said that if you learn how the then let me know i can uh, give the links for this chapter here mechanism of acid catalyzed tautomerism acid catalyzed um, tautomerism first step the addition of proton and at the methylene group you can see the addition of proton at the methylene group here and um, then the same the resonance is stabilized uh, 
um, intermediate happen. That means uh, if you look into here, uh, the charge was here, see? But the shifting the um, charge and therefore the bond, uh, pi bond is come here and the charge is shifted from there to there. So this is called the delocalization. So from one location to another, this is the resonance stabilized intermediate. And second, loss of hydroxyl uh, portion. So first, uh, delocalization at the proton and second, the hydroxyl loss. So when the hydroxyl group loss, then again, this type of proton uh, intermediate and this type of ketone form or enol form can be come. So either the uh, enol form or again, the as we, as we say, the shifting of hydrogen to the methyl and the um, double bond will be changed uh, from like here I saw, same thing actually. Here I saw, why do I, why? No, why I should just, yeah, yeah. So same thing actually will happen and uh, same the ketoenol. Uh, they, they, they are unstable and this is called the um, totomerization and this is how it works. Now, the, I think this is the final one. Hydroboration oxidation reaction. Hydroboration oxidation reaction, try to remember the reagent. This is very, uh, how to say, exceptional kind of reagent that we normally don't use. See, the name is diacetyl borane, SiA2. Even I, 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 I saw, I hear a couple of times when I was a student and now when I was teaching you, I never see the uh, application or I never had a chance to apply this type of experiment during the laboratory. This is the hydroboration, that means we, we will have the hydrogen and the boron and let's see how it is working. And uh, this is oxidation reaction, so ultimate product we will see here the single bond product when it will add it, the double bond broke. So anti markovnikov addition of water across the triple bond. And this kind of uh, water addition happen, presence of customized by this kind of reagent. No, we still have some, we have we still have some more oxidation. So this is not the last one, yeah. So let's see here. Uh, a hindered alkyl borane must be used to prevent two molecules of borane from adding to the triple bond. So that means since we have to add the water, so we are adding this specific reagent to prevent the mo or two molecules so that two molecules of bo this boron cannot be added. As I said, sometimes, you know, we also ask that why it, how it, why we are doing that and why it is happening. The fact is that each and every reaction discovered basis of our necessary. So every reaction when established, they have their own, uh, step, own stable criteria to find the specific product. This is how we customize the reaction and some are specific for a specific group of hydrocarbon or a specific group of carbon. So here we will follow the anti markovnikov and also the purpose we are adding this so that two boron cannot be added and we can prevent this. And here the next step we will find like that CR. Actually, we are telling this is CIA. CIA elaboration is SEC isoamyl, this group, SEC isoamyl. This is the SEC isoamyl group, and we use, like, uh, sometimes we use the mercury acetate or AC. So, like that, we use here CIA, that's SEC amyl or um, CIA amyl group. So, let's see here. So, first, we saw the oxidation here, the alkyne. They work on the first pi bond and we find this step. 
next C, the hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. So hydrogen peroxide, obviously, then clear the antimicronic of that means the uh, alkyl side will add the proton and the less substituted side will add ultimately the OH. So here, this will be replaced and here the OH will be added. Why? Because we are doing this is oxidation and the HOH addition actually in the end. So um, don't be afraid. You have to see that what type of uh, actually additional experiment is going on. So this is also kind of oxidation, but this is customized conditional by this um, di, I mean, diciamyl boron. So ultimately, you will see here the enol form, but as we know, this is a special, so they are not so stable, so they can be convert enol and aldehyde. This is the another things you need to be remember that when we first saw the acid catalyst auto, I mean, um, tautomerization, we saw enol keto conversion, this kind of reaction when we use the um, reactants mercury. And, but when we have this kind of reagent, you need to find out the um, tautomal product. So here, if we look into when we are using this reagent, that time it's going to change between enol to aldehyde. Okay, here we also could see the keto group, but actually this is not keto because you know the aldehyde group is CHO group. This is the aldehyde group. So in the second step of the hydroboration oxidation, a basic solution of peroxide is added to the vinyl boron to oxidize the boron and replace it with the hydroxyl group. Once the enol is formed, it rapidly tautomerizes in bases to the more stable aldehyde. So once the enol form, this is unstable, so they can rapidly uh, change to aldehyde and aldehyde is comparatively stable. But if you look into this arrow, this is actually reversible. So it can, this form to this form and even this form to this cam form can be formed. And this is the spe specialization of uh, characteristics of tautomerization. Mechanism of this base catalyst tautomerization. So same that we talked that first of all loss of hydroxyl um, proton. Same thing, the stabilized enolate or resonance stabilized ion form, and then uh, reprotonation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Reprotonation of the adjacent carbon. We are doing reprotonation of the adjacent carbon in keto form. You have to be practice oxidation of alkynes. Similar to oxidation of alkene, and we have a dilute neutral solution of potassium permanganate, uh, which oxidizes alkyne to diketone. But if we uh, heated the uh, same reaction, if we heat a little bit of more basic situation. So there is a two situation customize one is neutral and one is basic so when the neutral situation of reagent it will die ketone and uh, when we will give the uh, basic situation little bit of hot that time they will cleave the triple bond and finally we have the ozonolysis that also the similar we saw in a alkene so let's see so now i think you got it that exp and you have to be also remember uh, the kind of reagent and what kind of product we are fi finding. That's important. This is our neutral uh, situation. Permanganate oxidation. In case of uh, permanganate oxidation, uh, this is, we also say, hydrooxylation. Hydrooxylation. Write it down. Because sometimes uh, we don't tell like that, we say like that. Hydrooxylation. Hydrooxylation. So, uh, this is a neutral situation um, alkyne potassium permanganate. You, you, you could see that first, what will happen? First, the pi bond, first pi bond, and second pi bond will be broken, and this whole hydroxyl ion will be adding 
And finally, from this uh, uh, four hydroxyl uh, group, two molecules of water elimination will occur, and then we will find the di ketone. So two elimination of water, actually like that H2O, H2O. So like this, like this, and here, so, okay, the same side. Anyway, so this kind of water actually go, and the keto will be live on here. Under neutral conditions, a dilute potassium permanganate solution can oxidize a triple bond into diketone. This is an example of oxidation. This reaction uses aqueous potassium permanganate to form tetrahydroxy um, intermediate. And we also said this is hydroxylation, which loses two water molecules to produce the diketone. You know, this is... Um, if you practice, you will feel very interesting. And uh, uh, when you will sit for the exam, you will feel comfort comfortable. Okay, practice you. There is uh, no other things except practice for the organic chemistry here. Because we don't have any math problem, correct? We all have the reaction and mechanism. Sorry. Permanganate oxidation of alkyne to carboxylic acid. See the difference. Here, the neutral situation, we find that till keto. If further we need, so we will find here when we will put the basic situation, the potassium hydroxide, and we will warm. The, that means we will do the heat so that we will find the acid instead of keto. So that we are going to find. If potassium permanganate is used on the basic situation, then, then what will happen? Then oxidative cleavage will happen. So not only addition, but also this cleavage will happen as a result, acetate and propionate ion, and ultimately it will be formed acid, acetic acid and propionic acid. So the thing is that here, it will be cleavage. Here it will be cleavage and this kind of uh, acetate ion and propionate ion will become uh, potassium permanganate, potassium hydroxide in the presence of base and warm situation. So um, this will be our, sorry, this will be here our uh, basic situation oxidation. Now we have ozonolysis. You know, today um, I, I described the kind of reaction. Um, this is uh, very important, okay? Try to practice. Ozonolysis of, uh, maybe I'm telling so many times practice. Uh, I'm sorry for that, but actually this is only the way uh, to stand up with the high grade all points for this course. Ozonolysis of alkynes produces carboxylic acid. We saw alkynes give aldehyde and ketones. Okay, so here this is alkyne. This is the, our situation. The breakdown of this in presence of the reacid. Or, or obviously they use the ozone. Either permanganate cleavage or ozonolysis. When we talk about ozonolysis, we use the ozone reagent. Okay. So you can check, uh, we have in the, some example in the book, you can check it out. Now I wanna ask you, do you guys have any uh, question here? Let's discuss if we have something or uh, anything that you're feeling the challenging, let me know so that I can um, uh, help if I can anything, uh, additional uh, support materials. By the way, I wanna tell you that the beginning I, I gave you the two support material. This is for your understanding and some topic that I explained over there very clearly. But you need to focus on our syllabus, our lecture materials, our book, okay? Do not be confused. So, stop. 